welcome to a very special edition of All Things LGBTQ. We are hoping that this will be the first in an annual interview with the out members of our legislature to talk about what's happened this year. What are the things that they really think that we should know about? And what are they looking forward to for next year? So joining us is Representative Bill Lifford, who is our longest serving out legislator. And we thank, and we thank you for everything you've done. Oh yes, they did. <laughs> yeah. Representative Kathleen James, who was on an earlier show, and this is her first session, and Representative John Kalaki, who I'm told might come for his own interview in the near future, and this is also his first session in the legislature, so welcome. Thank you. Thanks. So, so I'm hoping for scintillating conversation. <laughs> so, we, yeah. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Kathleen's already been taking notes. <laughs> so let's start with the, what is it that has been acted on by the House, the Senate doesn't have to have acted on it yet, for which you think people need to be aware, or it's a particular bill that you're really proud that we did this this year. And notice, Bill, they're all looking at no, you. <laughs> no, can, I, 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 Do you I want to go you, first? I, I, I just because yeah, go. It, it happened today oh. that I just was looking at the emails and I saw that the governor signed Indigenous Peoples Day. Oh, yeah. and, and you were a House sponsor. I, well, I, I was, uh, how, many of us were sponsors in the House and Senate, uh, but I was able to present that bill to the floor of the House. Yeah. And it's a profound change. Mm -hmm. that we're recognizing this whole story. And to me, as, this, uh, as a new legislator, I just sat there and I, there was no fanfare at the governor's office, just was a press release that, oh, by the way, he had signed this bill. And I thought, change can happen. Yes. I mean, it's taken a very long time. And Vermont is one of the s states that has done this. But to think I that think we all only had a hand in that change, yeah. and then to look back and see all the different things that have happened. But that was my first, wow, moment. Like, and for people who don't know, this changes that holiday in October to Indigenous Peoples Day. And they had done it, it by proclamation. Day. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I, it I, doesn't I erase Columbus, it, but it tells the whole story. Yes. And uh, I just thought, good for us. And it, it kind of it also, for me, segues into the very first bill that H3. H3. Why don't you talk about that? Because that's pretty Which came out of the Education it, Committee it on did. which you said. Um, yeah, as a freshman legislate, uh, legislator, it was pretty amazing to me to have H3 be the first bill that uh, my committee worked on. Um, and uh, it was, that's the uh, ethnic and social equity bill. And yeah. similarly, it's been signed into law by Governor Scott. And um, that's really going to change the way we teach um, Vermont students the history of all of us. Yes. It's going to, you know, provide a much broader lens um, so that students can study the, the uh, culture and the contributions of social and ethnic groups that have typically been marginalized or overlooked or uh, discriminated against or oppressed, um, persecuted. So it's, I think it's a game changer. Misrepresented. Uh, misrepresented, yeah. So I, I, I do think it's a, I, I hope a game changer for, um, you know, for Vermont schools and to have that be the first bill that I had a chance to dive into and see it move all the way through the process. I, I know that much work had gone before, yeah. um, and to see it signed by Governor Scott was really meaningful for me. And as a part of the bill, there is a place at the table specifically for the LGBTQ community. Very specifically. You know, it's not that you know, we were included you know, as a sort of afterthought. We were central to the bill. Yeah, right, both right. on the um, both on the working panel that will yep. you know take a look at the Vermont standards and then in the language of groups whose contributions will be studied. So it's a pretty uh, pretty amazing piece of legislation. Yeah, it is. I I loved watching it outside the committee because as it was developing, it was really trying to figure out how to tell all of our stories and sort of as it was going into the oven to be cooked. Suddenly, <laughs> like the Jewish community was left out, not intentionally. I think it's just it was like, oh my God, with all the anti-Semitic stuff going on. Of course, that should be part of the conversation. And so it was. I love the way the committee got a lot of different opinions at the table and, and, and integrated all of it. It was a beautiful process for me to watch. It was the voices in the room. The testimony was 
was very moving. I, th that was my first, uh, my first legislative cry. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there will be many more to come. Yeah, that was very exciting. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'll say exciting as well for, for having been here <coughs> with the disappointment of not having been able to get it across the line previously because others had done work to try to move the bill and they would hit some roadblocks and to know that there was a commitment this year. This is, this is, this is going to happen and it's going to happen in the way that you described that it's going to be inclusive. It's, it's, not going to, it's not going to be, oh, put us in the bill so that the issue of race is demeaned or uh, not adequately addressed, but it's going to include more groups of disenfranchised people. Uh, so that was very wonderful and very powerful to, yeah. to see that. And it was Act 1, and which it's means Act it's, one. The, it's the first one. bill that made it through <coughs> the entire legislative process. Right. So that Act was one. phenomenal. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I also wanted to add in terms of e meaningful moments, um, <coughs> every time I, I walk past the sign um, outside the State House on the Senate side commemorating, um, you know, is it civil unions or marriage the equality, marker. the historic yeah. marker. Um, I, I, at the most of the time, I stop, and sometimes at the very least, I just you know give a little nod. Uh -huh. And um, the day that you spoke on the House floor um, mm. to commemorate the tenth anniversary of marriage equality, um, you gave such a moving tribute, and um, that made me kind of. You know, dig into. I I remember that day so well. I was far, far, far from being here, um, but it did make me. I, I took a little bit of time th that yeah. night after you spoke on the floor, and and I looked up to see who voted for the bill, and it was you know that was my second legislative cry, and to see the members who voted for that bill, um, who are still serving, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, and to see some who are gone was very powerful to me. Um, uh, you know, because like I said, I, I remember that day very well, and um, it's, you know, why my wife and I are married, and th that was a pretty neat moment, and I, I wanted to thank you for providing that to all of us. It was cool. Well, it, it, it's deeply meaningful to me uh, virtually every day. <laughs> uh, and I, I want to say something. One of, the most, uh, one of the most powerful moments for me this year was you introducing your wife on the floor <laughs> of the house just in the last week. And I sat there as you rose because your wife was there and I introduced myself briefly to her before that. And, and I just realized how powerful it is that, and I wanted to say that one of the things that's most powerful for me is that to have a group of us here, mm -hmm. to, to have us bringing our different experiences, our different lives into the house chamber uh, I remember early in the session, John, at one point you stood up and made an inquiry. I'm trying to remember the specific of it, and I was sitting there going, wow, yeah, I don't have to do it all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really. And, but I meant that in the really, yeah, in a positive. warm, appreciative way, that you had spotted something, and you were going to make sure that that got spoken to on the floor of the house, and it was very satisfying. And, and I remember uh, that, too. Yeah. And oh, I think it was around the Sexual Harassment Committee. Yes. Oh, it, right. it was. That's it was. Right. Oh, that is was. there anybody going to be on that sexual harassment committee who actually has the lived experience of being a survivor, same sex, of a, a, you know, a gay man yeah. or a lesbian woman or a trans person? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what it was. I, uh, talk about uh, powerful moments. Uh, and you were there when there were what 105 outright kids. Oh. 92. Oh. 92. 92 kids <laughs> who came to visit us. Oh, only 92. Only 92. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. The hundred. No, 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 but no, no the 105 yes. included the, the, the GSA faculty right. that came with them. But we counted downstairs. You know, I was going to say that how profound that was. Being in the room with the kids afterwards, the impact of their sitting in the chamber with the out members coming and mm -hmm. sharing stories, they walked away with this sense of, I can do this. Mm -hmm. You know, I I have a future, and that's because of you people. Well, which is amazing. It, it was because of everyone in the room, which was yes. beautiful, and that. That those many kids were there, and that their their lived reality is so different than our lived reality, and mm -hmm. you know we're we're different generations here even. And to me, it's you know the the gap, just realizing like, I mean that marriage equality stuff you did, Bill, is profound. But that the many steps before that, that these kids had 
been born into now. That's right. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Because of you know all the work, but to try to also share some of that history with them about what the AIDS crisis was really like. Because before then, the 70s and 80s, where people could not be open, they couldn't be teachers, they couldn't, they could lose their apartments, they had no job protection, um, and we've come pretty far in one way, you know, or in many ways. But it's still, I, I, I want them to understand the history because these rights as we see now, federally, are being taken away from transgendered people in the military, and you know, it's just lots more are gonna be stripped away. And so what was great is they could see that they could all dream to be yeah. us, because we couldn't have dreamt that yeah. as young people. Mm -hmm. There were no, there were a few role models, but Harvey Milk got assassinated oh. in my life. So the few role models there were, we're disruptors in a way, and now it's the norm, you know. And when um, Emily described herself as deliciously queer to the youth, <laughs> I, uh, I represent her. She says, "What a fabulous concept to, to say that to a young person. You can be deliciously queer and celebrate that, and that we don't have to hide it." And, I, and even though I missed it this year, and it broke my heart because it's one of my favorite days of the whole session. Honestly, it I was one of my it's one of my favorite days. Um, but I was out of town because my partner, my spouse, was needing me to be with him. And, and I was so pleased to think, well, others are going to be there, and, and it's not going to, it's going to keep moving forward. And I've heard from young people who, and from the adults with them saying that that's part of the highlight of the day, hearing from those of us Absolutely. who are out legislators. And when you say out legislators, I'm looking and there's like, we're only part of the group exactly. of right. legislators in the House, and then there's senators who are out, <coughs> and it's it's the way it should be that there are more of us uh, different coming from different parts of the state, bringing different experiences, and that makes it very rich. So, and and I had let you all know before we started when you were first appointed, you were the only out member. I was. How have things changed, and how does it feel now to be a member of this growing LGBTQ caucus? And then I'm going to ask you what your first year experiences were like. Well, what was, because you had told me the history, and, and was Ron before you? Or yes, no, right, Ron, no, Ron but Squires when was the first openly gay member of the right, House yeah. or Senate, but he had, he had died right. uh, and was no longer a member of the House when I was appointed in... April of 1994 by Governor Dean. Right. So Bill was the so only at that out point member. I was the only but openly it, gay. But and Ron was dying of AIDS, and didn't the Speaker of the House go down there and he swear, him in? He he swear him That's in? That's great. Ralph he did. Huh. Before he died for the his yes. his second term. Yeah. And Bill Clinton called him to congratulate him on his reelection. Yeah. And right. just for people to remember that Ron played a very important role. We were fighting at that point for the gay rights bill to add right. sexual orientation to the non-discrimination clauses. I was in the state house, not as a legislator, but I was the head of a mental health agency and an out gay man. And I just, you know, I came to talk to legislators to say, this is important, this will make a difference. And uh, Ron- We are the real people that you're debating right, on the floor. Right, right. Ron played a very important role. Again, he, at the time he was the only openly gay member. Right. There were, and I think, I think it's important for us to acknowledge in a way, uh, there were other legislators who were gay or lesbian, but for whom it was truly not safe to be out. Okay. And so I don't, I don't look back with a sense of criticism. Uh, I mean, I know some of these were, have become friends over the years. Right. And they sat there really trying to figure out what made sense in their world at that time. Uh, but... There was something very important about Ron standing up on the floor of the House during the gay rights bill, and he gave a speech that I know made a difference in oh, terms absolutely. of pass, passing that bill. I mean, uh, his, his as I interrupt you, his please. comment was, I can't begin to tell you how it felt <coughs> to be sitting here and listening to you debate whether my life has meaning and worth. And he, it was the second year of the biennium, so he had already, this was the second year that he had served with them, so they were getting to know him, so the impact of his standing saying, 
I'm the person you're talking about had an incredible impact. So how does it feel now? Well, it's, I mean, that was kind of my experience too during the civil unions uh, yeah. experience, the civil unions debate. I felt like at times my name was Representative Bill Lippert, the only openly gay member of the General Assembly. It was all like, kind of like every time. Here's the tagline. Yeah, and it was, and it was, it was fine. Uh, a lot because of it, re it reflected the reality of the situation. But I got to tell you, it's so much better. It's so <laughs> much better. <laughs> Seriously, it's, it's not like, oh, no, no, no. Take this. What about that? Can't I be in the spotlight? No, it's, it's like we get, we get to be there. And one of the things that I noticed over the last number of years is that uh, folks get to be, I mean, I've been on the Judiciary Committee for many, many years, and now yeah. I'm on the Health Care Committee. And every committee you has some kind of... You chair the health care committee. I chair right. the health care committee. Own it, yeah. Yeah, I chair the health care <laughs> committee. I chair the judiciary committee, no question. Exactly. But, but what's also been wonderful is for people to serve on the education committee or to serve on uh, human services committee or to serve in another committee. And it's amazing how there are important issues or the appropriations committee mm -hmm. yes. where decisions get made where we can't... One of, not any one of us could be on all those committees at the place where the decisions are getting made to speak up to uh, impact what's happening there. But when there's at least six, seven of us in the House and at least three more in the Senate than I, you know, when I think about who's listing, uh, that puts us in a lot of important places. Yeah. And the opportunities become that much greater. And that's part of what I love. The, the reason I was saying, you know, you're the chair and, and to own it is you were the first openly gay chair of a legislative committee, which I think that's true, which indicates that the legislature, your your colleagues, were able to look at the work that you were doing, what it is that you were providing to the legislature, and saying, we need to advance this, we need to advance Bill. So it was an indication of of the acceptance of sexual orientation, gender identity, you as a legislature, but also extending out to us as communities. So that's, but that's he does look fabulous with that crown on. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> he has the crown. Is the chair? Okay, so John. How no, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I have a crown. Oh, Moving you have the Yes, you do. Oh, no, I want one. <laughs> I have one that I'll lend you. I have a tiara too. So, what was your first year like? Uh, well, right now, it's disheartening. Because in the last two weeks, because. In my committee, we've uh, worked on minimum General wage. House and Military Affairs. General House and Military Affairs. So we do affordable housing. Mm -hmm. We did the National Guard. And uh, we do... Which was not an easy process. It wasn't year. easy. Liquor uh, control, uh, the lottery, anything that doesn't fit anywhere else comes to us. Minimum wage. Minimum wage yeah. and paid the, the family leave. Yeah, and those are deals. very big issues and uh, uh, very important to me emotionally as well as... Um, and I've watched, um, I was told by the chair of my committee, wh when it leaves our committee, you have to let it go. Oh, that's and not as, hard it, for us. as it goes to other committees, it's going to mutate and change. And uh, right now, the Senate has paid family leave and we have minimum wage. And I'm watching them kind of change, disintegrate. And I hope they come together. And I hope that we actually offer the people of Vermont these. The, the, um, something that's worthy for people to be recognized for the work and to be paid a living wage because I think it's essential that we do that. And so, you know, also two weeks from now I could be cheering and say, oh my God, look at how this all came together. I mean, you know how to do this. But I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm seeing less is not better. It's, it's less mm -hmm. for me. I'm, I'm going to give a quick plug for your committee because you responded to a request because the bill as it was defining family left a lot of members of our community out, and you came up with some very creative language right. to include That's us. Great. Yeah. Well, Representative Deanna Gonzalez is on my uh, the committee as well, and we just thought, we well, can do this. let's broaden it to be what's what is current, what is now, and if the other committees narrow the focus, that's fine. But let's not start with the narrow focus. Let's, let's start with the it. us, with the we, in this. And so I hope that survives. <coughs> But, that, but so John, that's an example of what you and Deanna could do by exactly. being yeah. at the table yes. in that room. That would not have happened, or it would have had to happen in a much more difficult way. 
of us lobbying and having our allies speak up on behalf of us. That you were Can at you the table that? was a profoundly important way to achieve the getting the language that made sense for our community into mm -hmm. that bill. Mm -hmm. And you should take great satisfaction in that, regardless of what comes next. What comes next? No, I, I, <laughs> I say, <laughs> no, I say I, I, I think it's true. I think it's in there, as you say. I just, you know. We're watching. Five years to get to $15 an hour doesn't, I, you know. I, but it's a very wide tent in that 150-member house. So it's, I don't know what we're going to do with that. Yeah. I'm still hopeful, though. So Kathleen on education, first year. Well, what is it? What is it? What is it? Sell uh, it. <laughs> you know, I. Other than you, know, you need paper and pen to take notes. Other than I so take notes on everything. I, you know, I'm gonna. I, I guess I have a slightly different um, perspective on on the legislative process than John, and, and maybe it's just because I'm an eternal optimist. But mm -hmm. um, I have been primarily reassured by mm. watching how the legislative process works. Um, to me, um, crafting legislation should be slow. It should take time. Um, it should encompass many voices and many points of view. It should fall apart before it gets put back together. Um, so that, I you know, in the end, hopefully it gets put, put back together in a way that is able to cross the finish line. And um, so, you know, when I watch bills, I, you know, I have moments of elation as they move in a direction that, that I approve of. And I have moments of despair, you know, as b bits get taken or bits get added that I don't like. Um, but to me anyway, so far, and I, I know I'm very new at this, um, I'm a big fan of, of the concept of a citizen's legislature. And, and I like the fact that the process is messy and slow and, and uh, rainbow colored and um, you know that, that bills have to suffer <laughs> before they before they triumph. I, to, to me that's the way it, it should be. Um, do, you, do you feel that your voice is being heard? Yeah. I okay. mean I, you know I'm one of 150 members so I, you know I'm trying to be um, realistic about the uh, right size of my voice um, you know I on certain bills I've tried really hard to have um, to have a larger influence on other bills I mostly listen um, you know it, it's important to me that um, that my voice be be one of many mm. I'm gonna fly in your jet stream with optimism <laughs> <laughs> I like that I need that for these Come on along. okay <laughs> so for next year is there something that you're hoping is going to be taken up? An issue that you're hoping the legislature is going to be debating? That hasn't happened this year? Because there are bills that you're hoping are going to make it to the finish line this year. Sure. But what well, are the things that you would like to work on next year? Well, let me, let me pick up on both of those okay. in, in a way. Because um, so I've been around and been disappointed and elated many times. And so I've, I've tried to convey to some of my colleagues on the committee, like, that's part of the process. It's, it is part of the process. Uh, when we're done with something, to me, we think, oh, we've done perfection because we worked so hard on it. And how could possibly, how could anybody possibly mess with what we just did? Well, guess and what? And then, then they do. But then they do. It's, it's part of the process. But, um, but I also am aware that there's things that, uh, as an example, this year, uh, Outright Vermont ha lost some of their funding. Mm. Yes. And um, in our committee, one of the things I was pleased about, and one of the things I get to do as the chair, and like you say, claim my role as the chair, it's like, okay, when we talk about suicide prevention, we're not going to talk about suicide without talking about LGBTQ youth and queer youth and what that means. And I can remember. Uh, someone coming into the committee in the last, not this year, but last year as we talked about suicide and suicide prevention and, and we were talking about the, uh, the study that's done with high school students, the, the risk, risk. Behavior risk survey. Behavior mm -hmm. risk survey. And uh, someone was testifying, they said, well, and they were talking about how, you know, LGBTQ youth are four times plus more likely to have 
uh, made self done self harm in the last few months. They've been more likely mm -hmm. to have made an, an attempt, active an, an active an active attempt at suicide. They're more likely and, and trans the same. I mean, it's 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 more and more and more. And uh, someone made the comment who was testifying. Well, now we know that, and we've got to figure out what to do. And I just couldn't take it. I was like. Wait a minute, I've been looking at this for 30 or 40 years. I can tell you what we need to do. <laughs> I, have, I can tell you exactly right now what we need to do. We need to change the homophobic society in which these young people are growing up. And the way we go about that is like, it's like enough already. It's not a mystery to me. <laughs> it's like we've been doing it and there's, we need to do more of it. Um, and which so is why H3 and Act 1. Yeah, I mean, and, and these, are all, these are all pieces of that. And so, you know, I advocated when we were we did budget recommendations from the health care committee to the appropriations committee, a whole host of things. Talk about disappointment, where there's not enough money and money is the, you know, the medium that actually makes big changes. Yeah. We were hugely disappointed. I was, you know, I wasn't totally surprised, but, but I was particularly disappointed there was no money for outright in the House yeah. budget. But you know what I heard just today? Me too. Yeah. Wait, did it's you in the Senate. Is it? Because the <laughs> Education Committee, that was one of my moments of down in the dumps, the Education Committee also recommended funding for outright, and I'd heard it was out. That was one of those and moments this, of like, the what do you mean it's out? The Senate may well, have added well, exactly, it to the agency of education. And I, said, and I said, okay, I know that outright's coming into the Education Committee and Education Committee, but why shouldn't the Health Care Committee weigh in on this as well? And so we put into our recommendations to the Appropriations Committee mm -hmm. that we should, in fact, give funding to outright Vermont because LGBTQ youth, queer youth are at such high risk. And so it didn't happen in our bill, disappointing. But you know, we laid the groundwork. So when the, when they go to conference committee, it's there. It's it's there on the Senate side in some way. And I think there's going to you know there will be some funding for outright. And, my, and I think that we get to claim our part in it, even as we laid some groundwork. And you know, we're not the end. Of, we're not the end of the line by any stretch on this. But that's an example. That's great news of the kinds of things that we can yes. do. Yes. Um, and we and and to recognize that we have allies, I mean, yes. I've I've said so many times that when I was the only openly gay member of the General Assembly, I had one vote. I didn't pass civil unions. I didn't pass marriage equality. By then, we had a handful right. of us. It requires allies, and what we do, our interactions on a daily basis in the building, actually transforms other people's lives. I could tell you story after story of legislators who came here with no intention. In fact, they said, oh, don't let me get embroiled in anything around gay or lesbian. Chester Ketchum. And, well, uh, John Edwards, who uh, was on the Civil Unions Committee, came here as a state trooper, retired state trooper, was, and we went around the table, and I remember him saying, I'm concerned about the border patrol and make sure border safety, and he's from Swanton. And I'm a Republican, I'm a retired state trooper, and I'm going, I'm a Democrat. <laughs> I'm a substance abuse counselor and a mental health counselor and I'm an openly gay man and I'm here because of civil rights issues and we looked at each other and went, oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> well, well, we and become fast friends and he voted, I want you to, he voted for civil unions knowing he that he would be elected. defeated. Mm. Mm. And to this day, he and I stay in touch. And to this day, he absolutely, no regrets. It was one of the most profound and important opportunities in his life, even though he missed terribly being here as a legislator, but he knew he changed people's lives, he our did, lives. He did the right thing. People. And, and on that, amazing. So. on that, it's been our half hour that oh you didn't goodness. think we would have enough time. <coughs> we need to have you and maybe a couple other people come back and we just spend the time talking about history. So with Any that, and, and thank you to all of you. And we're making more history. And I think, you know, we're living history. Mm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, and we're back with Senator Debbie Ingram, who is here on behalf of the Senate because they've been on the floor and hotly debating bills in your best interest. And, and now we're going to ask, Deb, what those bills might be. Oh, boy, yes. So what is it that you were debating today that took the bulk of your day? Well, we did big, big bills like the appropriations bill and the transportation bill. We were spending lots of money and the fee bill for uh, professional license fees. Uh, but the one that we were just working on uh, was H-57, um, which um, guarantees reproductive rights to all Vermonters. So that was this very was the important. Second, second reading? That's or right, third? second reading, second reading, yes. And yep. it, passed. it passed. Yeah, it passed. 
Did you do uh, a road call? 24 to 6 it passed, yes. Uh -huh, yeah. Okay. That's pretty much the same as Constitutional Amendment 5, which yes. was reproductive liberty. Right, yes. So mm -hmm. it, yeah. it was a predictable response. It was, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when the House was here, they, they made reference to your appropriations bill and mm. that you all on the Senate side had done something that they weren't able to accomplish. Yes, yeah, we, we restored uh, base funding for outright Vermont. Okay. So yes, yeah. And, and that's gotten support on the Senate floor. Mm -hmm. Looks it as though it will still be there when it goes to committee of conference. Yes, yes, it will. I, and then know, we work on people to keep it there. Well, that's, yeah, that, that's the key, really. I think um, the Senate budget is actually uh, a little bit higher than either the House budget or the governor's budget. So okay. I think we're going to get uh, pushback from probably both. Um, but but we will hold firm to the uh, to the outright amounts and and th th there was also a rumor that in your great wisdom you might have put money in for a new position for the Human Rights Commission. That's right. Yes, we did. Yeah, um, a, a new um, director position of outreach, uh, education and outreach, uh, uh, so that uh, some of these. Um, laws that were that were passing these regulations and these programs that we're instituting to help Vermonters know what their rights are and uh, how they can appeal if their rights are, are denied them. Um, we want to make sure that people actually know about uh, about these things. So we need um, a new person, a new staff member to we be need in someone charge who of that. Has time that <laughs> I mean, because right. I, you know, looking at those two pieces in tandem, mm -hmm. you know. One of the conversations was the behavioral risk survey and how we know that students of color and LGBTQ identified students are at greater risk for this whole host of, you know, bullying to s suicidal plans, et cetera. Human Rights Commission, I mean, for years we've been looking at how they could have greater involvement with harassment and bullying in schools. Mm -hmm. And one of the difficulties was always, you know, with everything that they were already doing, they were pretty much just tapped out for what they had for resources. They really couldn't take on one more. So That's very thank true. you for yeah. you know, helping our youth. Now, you were also lead sponsor of a bill that I understand has finally been signed by the governor, for which there may have been a lovely ceremony on the steps last <laughs> Wednesday <laughs> yes, yeah. with singing and drumming and right. food. You were the lead sponsor of the Indigenous Peoples Day. That's right, I was. Yeah, yes. Actually, kind of funny, funny story because um, in 2016 I was elected. So yep. my very first day in the Senate was, I think, um, j you know, January 3rd or 4th, um, uh, 2017, and I got that was the day I got sworn in. Everybody got sworn in, and um, my family had come from Georgia, and North Carolina. So you know, we were having a big, wonderful day. And we were standing in line at the cafeteria uh, for lunch, and one of my constituents, uh, who's also a, a friend uh, and a member of the tribe, uh, the Abnaki tribe, mm -hmm. uh, came up to me and he said, "He said, you know, Debbie, can I can I ask you uh, to introduce some legislation?" I said, "Yeah, absolutely. That's that's why I'm here." You know? <laughs> so, and interesting, you should bring right, that right, up. exactly, right. <laughs> and so, uh, so he, Charlie, said, "Well, you know, the governor has has every year signed an executive." proclamation uh, observing um, Indigenous Peoples Day in place of Columbus Day, uh, but we could really use a bill that would make that permanent. And I'm like, I said, absolutely, I'm your girl, absolutely, <laughs> I will I will introduce I that will legislation. I will sign on for this one. You bet. So, so I uh, had uh, Ledge Council draft it and, and uh, introduced it in 2017. And it didn't move out of committee. Nothing happened. And, and um, you know, talked about it in 2018 and thought it was going to come out of committee, but it didn't. And so I reintroduced it when I got reelected in 2018. So what and was different this year? Well, it's, you know, it's interesting, but I really think that, um, and this is, I think, sort of a, uh, a good thing that's come out of bad stuff, is that, you know, what's going on in the country with, um, you know, so many people of color and, so many different groups being attacked. Targeted. Um, you know, that, that there is um, a realization by people who are, you know, good folks that they, they're going to have to step up and be more uh, assertive and supportive of, pe of other people who are getting attacked. 
So I think, you know, in a kind of ironic way, um, all this horrible stuff we're having to put up with now has actually gave um, momentum. To yeah, this. That's right, been it an impetus. That the House debate was interesting in the sense that there were a number of white representatives who stood to say, yes, there should be an Indigenous Peoples Day, but we don't want to give up Columbus Day. Mm -hmm, yeah, you know, yeah. And mm -hmm. as I was listening to the debate, it was that sense of entitlement. Yes. Yeah, right, I, yeah. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. it's okay if you have a little room over here, but I'm not really willing to give up space mm -hmm, yeah. for you, mm -hmm. which was the same with H3, which was the Ethnic and Social Equity Studies Bill, which you were a sponsor of in the Senate. Yes. Th that had the same intent, the same impetus. That's right, yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, that was, um, uh, yeah, I, I sponsored the, the sort of companion bill in the Senate, but that it was the House version that got passed, but that was a group of, of um, people uh, of many different um, ethnic and um, racial communities, of uh, the disabilities community, the LGBTQ community, um, uh, and then uh, the Jewish and Muslim communities, and yeah. they all got together, you know, really to their credit, because I think what all often happens too is not only do people, of, you know, white privileged people of entitlement, um, you, you know, feel that they can't give anything up, they also try to do everything they can to make sure that those of us who are part of, you know, marginalized communities don't agree with each other either, you know, so <laughs> I'm, I'm really, I really think it's wonderful yeah. that they all work together. I, I know my issue, but, you know, don't confuse me with yours. Right, right, that exactly, yeah, yeah, uh -huh, yeah, right. So, or I have it worse than you do, or something, you know, to, uh, you know. I didn't sometimes. realize there was a hierarchy right, of, you know, of discrimination, but okay. right? But sometimes, okay. unfortunately, it's, it's, that's but been my experience. But When the uh, Senate had the bill, uh -huh. you did some interesting things with the language for H3 mm -hmm. to ensure that the LGBTQ community remained in the bill mm -hmm. and remained in the bill in regards to oversight and data collection. Yes, yeah, yes. That was, yeah, that was an interesting little thing that we had to work out with the Agency of Education and with how um, schools collect uh, data because we wanted, we wanted um, to, um, to include in the bill tracking um, bullying, incidents yes. of bullying and, and that sort of thing. But you, on the other hand, you also don't want to invade a student's privacy and uh, people aren't required to you know, you know, identify, the, announce their gender identity or their sexual orientation you know, as a matter of course. But when, when they experience some kind of uh, difficult situation, then you know, we, we want to be able to make sure that we can trace the reasoning for you know, the And, the and what you have put in place is you know, the student doesn't have to disclose what you're looking at is the incident of harassment or bullying itself. What was that based upon? Yes. You right, know, yeah. Whether mm -hmm. it is or is not true doesn't matter. It was the perception. This is why I did this. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So you're on the Health and Welfare Committee. That's right, yes. Mm -hmm. That had to be actually a difficult committee to be sitting on this session looking at you know, the Constitutional Amendment 5 mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. personal reproductive liberty and age 57, the right to abortion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got deluged by people on both sides of that issue in a, in a way that we really haven't seen for a while. It's true, it's true. Well, yeah, because Roe v. Wade's been in effect for about 45 years, so right. it's, you know, I think that that is actually a good, has been a good, you know. Um, kind Mediator. Of me yes, <laughs> thank you, that's good, yeah. It's, it's been a good, you know, kind of law of the land, you know, because it's allowed, you know, states to sort of handle it the way they they would, and, and it's kind of left the country at peace, uh, but now, no, uh, you know, again, it, things are getting stirred up and, you know, ugliness. And, and it's this was out. the first time in a very long time that the Vermont legislature has talked about right to choose mm -hmm. in a larger sense. I mean, before it was about a you know parental notification bill or very narrow aspects. Mm -hmm. This was the first time it was like, okay, let's open the issue. Mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. conversation, it had to be really difficult sitting in there because there was a, the the brief ones that I sat in on. There was an incredible amount of emotion. 
that you, well, it is a very emotional issue. Yes, yeah. Targeted definitely. at you all. Well, that's true. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. That goes with the territory I, I, I'm finding out as yeah. the longer I serve in the Senate. But, uh, but yes, yeah, these emotional issues are, I mean, we felt the same kind of uh, tension with the um, gun safety bills, yes, actually. Yeah. You know, anytime you have, you know, somebody's rights and their behavior towards others, you know, kind of intersecting like that, you're, you're you know, you're going to have an emotional uh, piece of legislation. Yeah. 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 Anything else that, that went through the Senate or is going through the Senate that you're really excited that, yes, we're, th we're debating this issue, yes, we're going to do something about this? I know that you had paid family leave and minimum wage. Yes, those are those are very important to me. But I think you know, especially maybe for um, for your audience Us. and for our, yeah for our community, um, I would point to the um, uh, the waiting period for um, for handguns uh, mm -hmm. because uh, you referenced already that that youth risk behavior survey right. um, and definitely um, you know LGBTQ youth are more likely to uh, commit suicide. Um, sadly. Um, and so this was a measure to, to really try to give uh, somebody who's in a desperate situation, um, you know, a, br a breather before they just walk home with a gun and, and you know, decide to, um, to take their own lives. An impulse Imp reaction. Yeah. Yes, you know, yeah. Here, here's the situation, I'm not sure how to respond. Here's this impulsive decision, which if it was 24 to 48 hours, I might be looking at it differently. Yes. Okay. The Senate was looking at a forty-eight hour waiting period, or did well, or did it go down to twenty-four? It went down. Originally, it was seventy-two, actually, okay. and then it went down to twenty-four. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, but also, um, and in health and welfare, I've been uh, we've been working quite a bit on the whole idea about what to do with marijuana and how you know how much to legalize it and how much to regulate it and and uh, that kind of thing. But uh, in health and welfare, we were particularly concerned about the uh, prevention aspect yep. of it and making sure that our young people um, understand uh, the effects of various substances, I mean, you know, nicotine and... Um, that they really have information. Yeah, that, it, that's right. Here that's are right. your choices and th this is the impact of it, Yes. both immediately and, and long term. And long term, that's right. Because when you're 16, you're invincible. Yes, that's right. You don't, you don't envision being us. I know. <laughs> that's right. Maybe it's this age. That's yeah. right. That's right. Well, and again, uh, according to the uh, Youth Risk Behavior Survey, yeah. uh, LGBTQ youth uh, uh, tend to use um, substances, substances more, more too, but, yeah, as a coping mechanism. Now, has family leave, it just got voted out of economic development, so you'll start debating that tomorrow? Uh, not tomorrow, but soon. Yeah, okay. it, it, um, this week. Yes, it should be. Yeah. Because one yeah. of when it was first introduced, and in, and in looking at the language in the bill, you know how family was being defined left a lot of people in our community outside of being eligible. The House came up with some really creative language mm -hmm. to put us back in. My understanding is that the Senate has pretty much kept those definitions so that. Yes, that's you know, we we might actually get to use this. <laughs> yes, I, I know. Wouldn't that be exciting? I yes. exactly. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Yes, that's true about the definitions. The I mean, I'm a little distressed that the me the actual medical portion of it, you know, for for the worker ha right. has, uh, you know, I think unfortunately what the, I mean, I understand the impetus of our committee in the Senate trying to come up with something Cost. that you know they they think will well they think will actually you know get signed by the governor but but uh you know i oh that's right he has to sign i this, know doesn't. i know and, but and he might have his own proposal yeah. yes yeah. yeah but i kind of like to see us pass what we think is right you know really look yeah. you know look for the the bold vision of what you know what we want to do for vermonters and then then deal with you know any opposition later rather than kind of negotiate with ourselves up front you know so okay Anything else that, that's gone through that's been really exciting for you? Um, gosh, you, you, yeah. you? You had six constitutional amendments. That's right, yeah. You know, it, you've had several that moved on. The one about equality of rights hasn't come up yet. No, that's true for, yeah, that, that is, no, that's particularly for you know, women, um, yes, the kind we're, of our own ERA. But we're, we're in there but as we're well. But we're in there, <laughs> that's right, I think we're in there as well, yes, definitely. Uh, but, well, the slavery amendment, I'm also very proud of. I was okay. the lead sponsor on that as well. And um, The that, House is debating that, that now. The, yes, yeah, the House is, is working on that now. 
Um, but, you know, again, I think it's one of those things where if you're a white privileged person, you might not see the need for it because we did have one vote against it, you know, in the, in the Senate. Um, but if you're a person of color, you, you know, if you could put yourself in somebody else's shoes and see that entitlement, what, yeah, yeah, what this language, you know, really refers to and, you know, and the, and the hurt that it caused and the, and the continuing idea of, you know, we don't want, we, you know, we don't care what you think and we don't care for hurting your feelings and, you know, you can come here or not. We don't really care. I mean, I think that's the message that we're communicating, you know, so um, I want, I want it out of, I want that, it, you know, it, language out. It needs to go. Yes. yes. Despite the argument of the historical and archival integrity. Exactly. If you're interested in the original version, you can go to the archives and look at it. Exactly. We, that's right. We're not getting rid of history books. We, you know? we, we will <laughs> make right. this accessible to you. That's right. That's right. So one of the things that we had talked about with the members of the House is, you know, one, one of the people who was here on behalf of the House was Bill Lippert, mm -hmm. who is our longest serving out legislator. Mm -hmm. And when he was appointed, he was the only out legislator, which is not the case anymore. No, no. So what has been your experience in the Senate, and, and how has this felt, being an out legislator? You know, does your voice get heard? Are you included, colleagues supportive, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. constituents? Yes, I well, I all of that, all of that, all of that, indeed. Yeah, no, no I, I have felt, um, simple felt supportive, <laughs> <laughs> supportive. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, just really easy. Yeah, there you um, go. but there are three of us in the Senate, and uh, but it's great to know that the other I forget now how many there are about six, six in the yeah. House. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's great to know they're there, and we do you know kind of support one another and help one another. Um, but you know, it's been. Well, I, I just feel like I, I'm on a continual mission to sort of remind people that we're, you know, that oh, we're here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, that's that's what I feel like we have to do because, I mean, one of the first times I stood up uh, to speak in um, uh, my first term, um, somebody actually told, they told a, just a funny kind of anecdote about, uh, like, he said, she said with regard to marriage, you know. Uh -oh. And I stood up and I said, you know, I just remind the senator that it could be, <laughs> He said, he said, or she said, she said, too, you know, <laughs> you know, just trying to kind of make a joke out of it. But, but really, you know, to, you know, there, making there the was point. A, there was a point. Yeah, to, yeah. You know, and, you know, I find I have to do that sometimes. And um, that's, you know, that's okay. I want to just remind people we're here. I was going to say one of the other things that you do, merely by <laughs> virtue of being an out legislator, you met with the outright youth. Yes. During Leadership Day, mm -hmm. 92 youth. And what I told people is the first time we sponsored something, there were 15 youth. Oh. And well, no, and we were incredibly excited we had that many. Yeah, yeah. But uh, 92 yeah. youth. That, oh, I know. That's that's like one of our favorite days of the year. Um, I, I think all the all, all of us yeah. feel the same way. And it's wonderful to, to, to be with the young people and to, to talk to them and and to just to see, yeah, to, to see how many of them there are, it's I, just so, so awesome. And, um, you look up and the house chamber was filled with yeah, students. Yeah. It's like, where did you come from? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's so great. And th from being in the room with them downstairs, you know, when they left with all of you <coughs> talking with them, mm -hmm. they walked away with this sense of, <coughs> I could do that. Yes, you know, that's great. That, that sense of possibility. And I'm so glad. Yeah, that's yeah. what we really want. Yeah, and we need more. We need our voices out there constantly. So. Yeah. You mean we get to go out and do the active recruitment for which we've always been accused? <laughs> that's <I> right. <laughs> we have to get the microwave oven, uh, right? Exactly. <laughs> I, okay. So this is only the first year of the biennium. Right. We got another year coming up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What are you hoping is going to come up next year that that hasn't been discussed yet? Because mm, you know yeah. there are things you're hoping are going to make to the, to the finish line this year. Yes. Yeah. But well, what are you looking yeah. forward to for next year? Yeah. Well. Um, well, I really want to do some um, some investigation about um, you know some of our um, uh, social service programs. You know, we we've been we we put some money in uh, the appropriations to kind of shore up. You know some of these, but I, I'd like to really oh, take a more in-depth look at at this whole concept of um, a guaranteed minimum uh, income. 
mm -hmm. uh, which I know is a very radical kind of thing. We do have one Democratic um, nominee, presidential nominee, uh, Yang, who's that's his whole platform, you know. But you know, really looking at, I mean, it just when I'm looking at all these numbers and stuff, and I'm thinking about you know the Vermonters that you know many of them have, you know, uh, they they uh, need the help of, of right. some you know inter intersecting uh, overlapping programs. You know, I'm, I'm just thinking, wow, we could probably save the state money and give these folks greater dignity and, you know, more help if we actually came up with some some version of, uh, you know, kind a of a true thing. systems approach that regardless of how you enter the system, you get the full benefit of the entire system. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. Last session, you were one of the people involved in looking at for health care, mm -hmm. primary care providers. Right, yes. In this, I recall, it ended up merely being a study commission. That's right, that's right, yes, yeah. So when does the results of that come back, and what might that lead you to doing? Yes, well, you know, we've been doing a lot of uh, e uh, evaluation of the, the accountable care organization yep. that we have in the, and the, the whole all-payer uh, system that we have, so that, you know, we have Medicaid and Medicare and commercial insurers you know, all paying into the same kind of pot. And we're now trying to switch to a model where we're, we're paying um, uh, big pr providers to keep people, keep a region of people healthy rather than doing yeah. this fee for service every time somebody's sick, you know. So that actually That's is having- That's a radical having, concept in itself. I know, it really is. And Vermont's, Vermont's a leader, uh, it, we've, we've discovered, uh, of, you know, across the country. In many ways. <laughs> it's true, it's true. But, but I, you know, I'm actually finding that uh, if we continue to make sure that that, that system, the system change is healthy, we're going to get to some of those goals that we had uh, in, in coming okay. up with the universal primary care system. Because primary care is, is, is lifted to the highest you know, priority in a system like that where you're trying to keep people healthy. Well, and thinking in terms of our community, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, how many times do I need to, one, go in and then be out to my provider, mm. and then in some instances, then in turn, train my provider on what it is they should be giving me <laughs> right. for services. <laughs> yes, because they don't or, know. Or <laughs> what I'm really not going to need. But, and that's what I, I mean, when I sat in on the committee's w hearings last year, that was the part that really got me was looking at, I have a person who's going to coordinate my care. Mm -hmm. They're going to know me not only by virtue of this clinical record, but the person in front of you. Yes, yeah. And, and that's what's really going to make the difference. Yeah, yeah. You know, you saw me three months ago. I'm coming in now, and wait a minute, you look different. What's happening here mm -hmm. versus I'm being sent to this other party or I'm being seen by somebody else who doesn't have that training background. Right, right. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Okay. So what else? Anything? Okay. So, well, uh, yeah, well, um, I'm sure that there are other things that I would, there are other well, things we should be doing in climate change. Uh, you know, I think okay. um, um, I, there was I, lead I in the water in schools. That, lead in the water. Yeah, well, got, we're yeah. hoping to get that out uh, very soon. Yes. Um, I we're going to pay to ensure that Champ has has a home and that she's right. he's <laughs> really clean, happy. Has a clean tub to yeah, uh, swim he's around. Happy. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. That's those are continue to be important. Definitely. So, so the question I didn't ask the members of the House, mm -hmm. but since we have time, do you intend on doing this for a while? <laughs> well, I'm enjoying it's, it. It's, it's got your attention, and yeah, yes. One of my one of my southern <coughs> friends uh, like uh, was teasing me when I first got elected. He goes, "You're, you're really liking this, aren't you?" And I said, "Yeah." pretty much like it. He goes, yeah, you're like a pig in slop. So, <laughs> I'm not sure that's quite the reference I would make. But. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, it's an environment that I, that I feel like I, I'm functioning well in. I, I love my, my colleagues. I like, you know, it's a real privilege to be at the table when decisions are being made. And I enjoy the, doing the research and hearing the testimony and really understanding issues in depth. And uh, yeah, I'm very, I'm very and, happy, very pleased to be And the fact here. that someone from within our communities who is proud of who they are as a member of this community <laughs> is the voice at the table. <laughs> yeah. yes. 
So okay. thank you. Oh, thank we you. We are looking at this becoming at least an annual event, but you know I always like inviting you back just to talk. Well, I'm always happy to be here. Great. Thank you. Thank you.